There is a pocket of north central China where faith is everywhere you look. In a country so culturally secular, Islam's road has been one of resilience. The people who live here are known as the Hui. They look and speak Chinese. They are integrated on the whole. But their worship, their lives are changing. And there is an uncertainty here. In a dusty corner of rural Ningxia, we find a small mosque with just a handful of worshippers. Lao Hai and his neighbours have a long history here. They remember what has gone. The dome, for instance, that once stood on this roof. They said no Western, no Arabic styles are allowed. We must build Chinese-style mosques. You wish it was still there, though, do you? Do you? Would you prefer it if it was there? Of course I wish, but a wish cannot turn into reality. <laughs> People are a little upset, but you can't do anything about national policy. It's the country's policy, and you have to obey. But it's not just the buildings that have changed here. There's a presence, a paranoia too, of another all-powerful force. In our mosque, there are papers about the party's law. They are on the table, well placed. The party regularly teaches policies. All around this village, there are hints of what's happened. Remnants of Arabic signs ripped away, secular pillars where minarets once stood. At one site, the mosque has gone altogether. And everywhere was eerily quiet. Small clues that mosques were even still open. This mosque is similar to so many that we've seen here. It's not closed, uh, but a little quiet. There isn't much Islamic architecture left. And look up here, there's a document that lays out the rules and regulations about being a good imam in China. At every site we visited here, party doctrine was presented, sometimes in the most prominent of places. And in all the towns we went, the picture of destruction was the same. We visited 26 sites in total and analysed nearly 40. Of those, over 80% have had domes or minarets removed or buildings destroyed. Sites like this in Linsha. First, it's Islamic features removed and a Chinese-style roof added later. And elsewhere, moves to close or consolidate. At this mosque, the prayer hall demolished completely. For many, though, buildings are the least of their worries. Instead, it's the future they fear. Children are now largely completely banned from mosques like this. Maybe 10 years ago, would you have had writings like this mm. in a mosque? The deputy no? imam here didn't want to show his face, but it is etched with a sadness for what that might mean. In our childhood, let me tell you, there were 200, 300 in one mosque. Now there's not even two or three. It's not a good feeling. It feels unnatural. In the past, there were many students and imams. The religion was living, and now it's like it's dying. You get a sense here of just how important people's religion is to them. It's so steeped in their culture and their history. And people have largely accepted some of the changes here because they're broadly quite subtle and quite incremental. But it is reflective of a broader trend and it's happening across China. The encroachment of the state and the attempt to control anything or anyone deemed to be different. The state has been clear its aim is to make Islam more Chinese. This internal document states the need for Islam to adapt to socialist society and mosques. They should be tearing down more and building fewer. But authorities are clearly still anxious we were followed and watched as we worked. This interaction felt too dangerous to film, but an unidentified man is threatening to call villagers to attack us. Ma Hui Yun is Hui, but lives and works in America. He can no longer travel home, but he can speak more freely about what's happening and why. Communists are trying to justify all this oppression in the name of national security, in the name of patriotism, in the name of modernization, in the name, of course, of Marxism. Without eliminating religions and the beliefs, you really cannot have loyal subject. 
There have been pockets of opposition, like this last year in southern Yunnan, protests over the removal of a dome. But so many more are just trying to get by. They know too much talk carries danger. Arby's home is basic. Her husband works away. Her reluctance to criticize common. But she does feel stuck between the rules of state and religion. Do you think it's fair to say that it is more difficult to practice Islam in China than it used to be, say, 10 years ago? Certainly it's more difficult, she says. It's not okay if we don't worship. It's not okay if we do worship. It's not okay if we do nothing. China says it respects religious freedoms and that it takes seriously the protection and renovations of mosques. Many here told us they do feel proudly Chinese and are happy as long as worship's permitted. But it is unclear what the end goal is and how far this policy could run. Helen Ann Smith, Sky News in Gansu province, China.